Hello, everybody. Good morning. It is day four. Chris, day four. Day, day four. four, right? What, Thursday, right? Yep. Last day of Cannes 2024, and here we are at Stagwell Sport Beach. My name is Gina Gray. I am with Call McVoy, a full-service creative agency based out of Minneapolis, and also part of the Stagwell family, which is anchored here at Sport Beach. And this morning, I am with my friend Chris, and Chris is going to say hello and tell us a little bit about who he is and why we're here. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, good morning. My name is Chris P.A. I'm the co-founder, chief marketing officer of a company called Community Media. Um, we're a digital media company connecting brands to diverse audiences through gaming. Great. So, Chris, talk to me just a little bit, and this is an impromptu question, about what, why do you come to Cannes and what are you getting out of it? Ah, good question. So, um, we come to Cannes um, really just to, to network and to connect with um, like-minded individuals, obviously. We kind of stumbled into media, um, so we're doing a lot of learning as well. I think, as, as I like to say, like it's for us, our success has kind of fell on like the marriage of, of practice um, as well as academia. And so, you know, we're, we're here learning as well as just applying it in real time. Well, I think that that's really appropriate, especially when we're going to talk a little bit about gaming. We're going to talk a little bit, and as we're sitting here at Sport Beach, the connection between sport and gaming. I have two teenagers at home, so okay. gaming is top of mind. Yes. So if it's okay, I'll ask you a couple of questions. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, Chris, how do you see gaming impacting underrepresented communities? Um, I think so. This is kind of like a shameless plug, but we're, we're doing it. Um, so community, um, kind of like our claim to fame was that we started the first ever competitive esports league for historically black colleges and universities. Um, we realized and we're re really founded on a stat that says 83% of African American youth play video games daily, but then only 1% or excuse me, 4% of African Americans work within the video game workforce. Mm -hmm. And so that being like the biggest disparity we wanted to try and overcome, we essentially launched this league, um, originally launched it in partnership with Amazon, um, and to date, I mean, we've been, over, been able to provide over $2.5 million in scholarships for underrepresented schools and students um, in the form of scholarships just from, like, competitive video game play. So as of now, like, you're able to essentially, as an HBCU student, win a full-ride scholarship from playing your favorite video game for, let's say, like, a month. Oh, my God. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. And as gaming continues to evolve, what steps do you believe should be taken to ensure that its development and implementation are inclusive and equitable for all cultural and societal groups, especially underrepresented communities? Yeah, so we focus a lot on uh, underrepresented communities and what we like to call like our, our tribes. And so a larger congregation, obviously, is uh, and it's kind of like a page out of uh, Dr. Marcus Collins' book. Um, so shout out to him. But our larger congregation consists of gaming culture, right? Um, but then when you think about gaming culture, there's, you know, your anime enthusiasts, uh, you have your cosplayers, your people that, for those of you who don't, don't know cosplays, basically just dressing up as your favorite cartoon character or your favorite anime character. Um, you, there's, you know, your, your competitive gamers, you know, you have your, your casual gamers. And so there's a lot of different tribes that operate within. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is just try and make sure that like cool doesn't kind of like discriminate. Mm -hmm. um, and so where, you know, if you're a gamer or you're interested in skateboarding or you're interested in any of these different things, you're essentially outcasted as like a nerd. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just try and make, you know, the nerdy stuff cool. Mm -hmm. I will say the valedictorian of my son. My son just graduated high school, and the valedictorian of his class is a, yes. not an athlete and a very active gamer. So exactly. there you go. There yes. you go. Um, Chris, what do you see as sectors or industries where gaming has made a significant positive difference in impacting the visibility and representation of different communities? Um, I mean, there's there's a lot happening right now in the gaming industry. A lot of people don't necessarily know, but gaming is um, worth more in terms of market cap than the film and the music industries combined. Mm -hmm. um, and so as of right now, you know, there's a lot of, you know, things happening as it relates to just game devs. Um, so game development has become a lot easier with the adaptation of like Fortnite creation. Creative suite. Um, so you can literally go into, and I'm pretty sure your son might be oh, doing yeah. this. He's going into Fortnite and he's like creating his own video game. And so in that instance, you know, he's able to create the characters that look like him mm -hmm. and look like his friends. Um, there's also competitive video game play, again, where you can go and you can compete and join in these tournaments so you can take home real money. You know, we had a tournament where um, there was a young kid, he won. $80,000 from this Mortal Kombat tournament. Um, you know, he full ride scholarship, and then he's also going to use some of that money, he said, to pay and help his mom with her medical bills for lupus. Um, and so, you know, just being able to create like those type of opportunities where for us, it's all what we like to call social good through media. Um, but it's also, it's, it's like heartfelt moments where, you know, you're making a real impact. And, and for us, it's always impact over activity. You know, we don't do anything without making sure that like our audience is impacted from it. Mm -hmm. Love it. 
So, Chris, in your view, what role should policymakers, technologists, and even marketers with close ties to community leaders play in shaping ethical frameworks that foster cultural diversity and inclusivity? Um, I think it starts with the education. I think it also starts with the access. There's a the huge access barrier. Um, and that's obviously what we like to call like the digital divide, right? Where, you know, in a young African-American or Latinx household, you're, you're growing up and you probably don't have a household computer, um, let alone one that you could like play video games with. Um, I remember growing up and I was playing on, you know, a computer, but there was dial up. And so my mom is trying to call home while I'm, you know, me and my siblings get home from school and, and I'm on the computer and, um, you know, she just can't necessarily access us. But there's on the flip side, there's kids that have access to computers and PCs and those are the kids essentially that, you know, obviously they're ahead. Um, and so just making sure that there's access. I think it starts with education, though. Um, and so it starts in the schools. And that's honestly how we got started as well. It's just going to the schools and kind of, you know, letting people know that, hey, you could you're playing a video game, but you can also work within this industry as well. Mm -hmm. I have two wild card questions that you weren't prepared for. Let's but, do the, it. but the first of one, first of, um, first is, how are you like with the inclusivity thing and obviously helping people who don't have access to technology? I know from experience, like you know, my 18-year-old son is, mom, the new version of the MLB, the show is out. I need yeah. to buy it, whatever, get a job, whatever. <laughs> so uh, talk to me a little bit about what the community is doing in that space to just yeah. uh, allow some of access to the new technologies. Everybody wants more money for the new skins on Fortnite or yes. whatever. Yeah, so we, um, we, we do something that's really cool. So like a lot of, again, we like to do what we call social good through media. Um, and so we'll take our sponsorship dollars or our media dollars and we're actually building out like esports and gaming and innovation labs on the campuses of the schools that participate in our league um and so you know we have verizon as a sponsor for example and you know they'll say hey we we want to sponsor this league and then they really really buy into like the story mm -hmm. and so we're able to now partner with like their foundation to then be able to get some get some dollars and essentially pour it directly back into the community. And so to date, we've been able to build over 13 esports and innovation labs um, on campuses. And then also we're based out of Atlanta. So we work with uh, the city of Atlanta public schools and the mayor um, to be able to build out esports labs at these different recreational centers oh, as well, so where, cool. where kids are, are going. You know, they're kind of trying to get away from home, get away from their environment. And, you know, we want them to have a safe place to be able to do the thing that they love the most mm -hmm. um, and so you know working with the cities to be able to do that as well that is so cool thank you okay so what gaming what's your favorite game um, or what my... do you, what's your favorite right now what's the OG for you so my OG is like uh, probably NBA streets NBA or NFL streets okay. yeah that's like I don't think it gets better than that <laughs> Um, favorite game right now? You know, honestly, I haven't played a video game. <laughs> That's okay. You've got other things going on. But yeah, I, I, I play mobile games. So I can play like Call of Duty Mobile and it, you know, it takes me like 10, 20 minutes yep. just to get my mind off of things and then kind of get back to work. My 53-year-old husband does a lot of Rocket League yes. just, to just to quiet his mind. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it was lovely to chat with you. Thanks for coming to Sport Beach. Thanks Likewise. for coming and doing having a little chat. No, for sure. Thank you for having me. Like I said, there's no better place to tell your story than the south of France. And um, <laughs> I'm telling the story to anybody that'll listen. So. Great, great. Thanks. Thank you. So